At the 2019 edition of Viva Tech, there are two Swiss innovations that are making a lot of buzz. One of them we've already met at a previous Tech Talk, Animal. It's good to see you, buddy. That's right. He comes to us from ETH. And from EPFL is Twice Exoskeleton. They are helping people that have lost the use of their limbs walk again. Thank you so much for being with us today. It's and a Jim, pleasure. both of you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> what was it like for you to be on stage today at Viva Tech, showing this technology? Oh, I think um, it's a really. I'm really proud and happy to be here with my team because um, it's a, an important place, and I would like every every people, disabled people. Or paralyzed people to to know about that technology and to share that and that why it's wonderful to to be in a place like that. So in order to give our viewers a little bit of background, you were an acrobat yes. and a circus professional. Yes. And then you had an accident in 2007 that left you paralyzed from the waist down. Yes, that it is. And then in 2016, is that correct? Yeah. You connected with Twice and were able to somehow regain <laughs> uh -huh. what you had lost. What was it like when you first took your first steps in the exoskeleton? Can you describe that feeling? Yes, it was very, um, it was amazing, it was very, beautiful feeling I really I had the, the impression it was like a dream coming true but also a dream that I didn't dream anymore because uh, after the accident the doctors told me I would never walk again and so I forgot I didn't think anymore about that and after nine years in the wheelchair when I could stand up for the first time I thought but is it true? Oh, my legs are moving, wow. <laughs> Did you ever imagine this technology could exist? No. Uh, when I was contacted for the first time, I didn't know anything about exoskeletons. And when the engineers explained me about it, I thought it was for people who were less disabled than me, who were maybe only a little problem at the legs but not at the waist and I thought okay let's try but I think it won't work and <laughs> and then it worked and more than, than better and good and yeah. And actually what we're seeing uh, this year is a, um, a second version of yes. TWICE, a, a better more improved version of the exoskeleton what is different and how instrumental were you in helping them come up with the second version? Did you tell them this doesn't work in the first one? Yes, of course. Um, that was a very important part from me that I had to do is to tell the engineers what was working, what was not working, to give new ideas about what we could do and what people in my situation need and that's why we could improve rather quickly and uh, this new version now is really a step further than the first one yes. So it works a little better, is it heavy? It's about uh, between 15 and 16 kilograms. It's is it easy to maneuver to so operate? Or? Yes, it's, uh, it's light white, uh, it's not heavy if you think about what it is. It's the um, lightest exoskeleton in the world that has the capacity to climb upstairs and to, to move with a completely paralyzed person inside until 80 kilos. Uh, someone so someone who's, who's, who's not even, who can't even use their arms? Yeah. Uh, wow. uh, the person should be able to use the arms, yeah. okay. but who, a person who cannot use the legs at all, uh, that does work very good. <laughs> and you're working with this team of engineers from EPFL? Yes. 
in Lausanne. Uh, what can you tell me about them, about TWICE? Yeah, so it's a very serious team and what I like with them is when I tell them and speak about an idea, about the next time we meet, they made it. And they have a very, uh, a very short reaction time and um, it's very interesting because I am working in an artistic, in my job, I'm more in an artistic uh, world because now I do balloon decorations and before that I was circus artist. But I always have a connection with the EPFL because my father was a physician. This is interesting, and, right? Yes. It came full circle for you. Yeah. You are German originally, but you moved to Switzerland as a because child. Because of my because father. Because your father was at EPFL. Yes, yeah. As a professor. Yeah. Okay. So it's funny, and um, and I like uh, to cooperate with that people because uh, they have a type of thinking and developing that is different than in my field, and uh, it's very um, yes we we learn from each other and can improve each other with that. So you really get to see this um, this your creative artistic world coming together with technology and how this has really served to create something incredibly yes, because, useful. Yes, because sometimes I give ideas that are not mathematically proven or exact or possible, but the engineers think about my ideas and then I try to, to make a, a schedule and something and, and I try always to realize my ideas and so it's uh, it's very well, yes it's really really nice. And to finish up, if you if you look forward a little bit and perhaps a dream, what would you like to see the exoskeleton be able to do? Like, what is your ultimate goal here? Oh, one of uh, the next goals that we are already working with that. Uh, is that we will be dancing with the exoskeleton and uh, yes we we just made a few choreographies it's not we already it's not it's not ready mm -hmm. but it will be ready soon and then another step that is very important but not for me but for everyone is to be able to use the exoskeleton in daily life uh, instead of the wheelchair and I think that will be possible soon because, yes, we, we really develop the exoskeleton in that direction. Well, thank you, Silke, so much for your time. And I look forward to seeing those dance moves <laughs> in the exoskeleton next yes. time we speak. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, too. <laughs> so, Tristan, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. To start off. And so, twice on Franz Forbes' list of innovations to watch at Viva Tech this year, as well as another list, C News is also saying that yours is one of the innovations to watch. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, that's a great news. I mean, for us, it's, uh, it's an amazing surprise. We were not expecting this. We were coming here with really no expectations, just seeing people just be here, be present. And we're, we're really happy to be uh, recognized, acknowledged for, for what we're doing. No expectations? No expectations. I think you have to see the world with, you know, uh, with positive energy. You have to see the world with, uh, with ambitions. But if you if you put too too much pressure, if you put too too high expectations, then you can only be disappointed in the in the end. So again, really good reaction to what you've been putting out there with the Twice exoskeleton. Are you surprised by this reaction at all? I think we've had a lot of really good uh, really good feedback so far, and we're really putting a lot of effort. Uh, to, to, to challenge people and we're putting a lot of effort coming up with new solutions, coming with surprising ideas, coming surprising uh, new uh, developments and, uh, and it's good to be uh, recognized in doing this. It's so interesting because uh, as we were talking earlier you were telling me that I mean you are a startup but you're actually in a kind of a pre-startup phase even, yeah, still absolutely. in the lab. So we're still in lab, we're still in a let's say development and research phase but we like to call ourselves a startup because it gives us this incentive to always put the human in the center of all the considerations and and as a startup you have to think 
user-centered, you have to think customer-centered, and that's something it's not really often done in, in research, and, and that gives us, um, let's say, an edge um, in, in, in the research environment, uh, being user-centered instead of science-centered. Your ambassador, Silke, is a paraplegic, and um, we've seen how, she was telling us how it's very much a case-by-case -case situation, and that you can adapt the exoskeleton to different conditions. Exactly, so TWICE is really made around the user, so we really tailor the device to each individual, to each pathology, to each morphology, and we go from the user and then to the device. And we can adapt it to different uh, use scenarios. We've tested it with paraplegics, but also with people with amputation or people who really, really want to do skiing. So it's really going in different directions. You, you can ski with this? It's something that we've not shown so far. Uh, it's coming up soon in the news. Um, skiing is possible as well. Uh, it's one of our new, uh, uh, new projects. And Silke said there's some dancing on the horizon? Exactly, I think it's one of the other projects we have with her uh, running for, for a few months now. We really want to get her back on, on, on her feet, and not just for walking, but also for other activities that she can dream from. Mm -hmm. So Silke has become a bit of an ambassador for you. How did this connection come about? You reached out to her, is that right? We were looking for someone who can be our test pilot initially to take part to this competition, which is called the Cybatlon. And uh, we, reached our, we reached out to a lot of uh, groups of wheelchair users, and uh, Silke came out and uh, she said, yeah, I'm interested, maybe we can do something together. And that's, that's how it started initially, and it's been a great time working, working with Silke. And now she, I mean, it sounds like she works a little bit as a consultant as well, because she can tell you what works and what doesn't work. So Silke is always challenging us with new requests, new ideas, new feedback and inputs. For us as an engineer, it's a blessing to have real use cases for our ideas and not come up with solutions and look for problems. We really have problems and we look for solutions for them. If we go back to your business model, and we said you're, a pre, you're in a pre-startup phase, so does this mean that you are not looking for funding yet? Or, and how are, how are you funding your research? at the moment, and where are you looking to go? So at this time, we're not funded by, uh, by investors. We're trying to, uh, to stay, um, let's say, we're trying to stay as independent as possible for the longest time possible, so we can really uh, keep the human in center, keep our uh, human approach, keep our ethics um, in, in the center. And uh, being independent and being publicly funded gives us this freedom to really keep our, our line of research uh, so I was going to say, you have to pay your bills. So, Absolutely. So you do this with public funds so from right, the university? Right now and we're from still in a university, we're still in a lab, and it's really more a startup approach in the research than a startup per se at this time. Okay, all right, so this is, this is how you're kind of covering your, your costs, mm -hmm. so to speak. And then eventually, what's the dream? Well, eventually is to put out a device on the market and to reach out to actual people, to actual users and being able to, uh, to put a device on the market is, uh, is actually a dream for an engineer to help people for real. And that's, of course, that's the, that's the, the end goal. And as you uh, formulate this dream and, and, and take these steps, do you see yourself having to leave Switzerland in order to do this? Or do you feel like you're going to continue to get the support you need here? So I think Switzerland is a great place for, for development of uh, startups like ours. Uh, having the combination of uh, robotics you know, high precision machining, um, high precision engineering, and the healthcare uh, approach of, of Switzerland. I think that's that's a great place for for a startup like us. But do you still feel like after you after you move out of the startup phase, are you going to have to go look for funding? Because many startups are telling me this that they don't get the the financial support they need just in Switzerland. That you have to go out to Silicon Valley, or you have to go out to other places. So it's true that the uh, funding uh, place in, in Switzerland was not so well into growth funding so far. And if you're really looking for a Series B or Series C, it's quite tough to look to, to find funding in, in Switzerland. Why? It's, it's a really good question. I think uh, it's, not, it's not commonplace in Switzerland to really uh, invest a large amount of money. And um, 
it's, it's just a matter of philosophy. I think it's changing now with the years and it's evolving. There's some uh, really new funds that are uh, coming up now and it's going to be an exciting time for us as well with the timing we might really fit into this uh, changing, uh, changing times in Switzerland. And it feels like uh, at, around the EPFL ecosystem is also quite, um, how should we say, dynamic, which works for you, right? Uh -huh. So it's true that the uh, EPFL ecosystem is great for a startup like us because it's, uh, you know, it, it's so bubbly. There's so many things happening. There's so many other startups, so many labs you can uh, pick research from. Uh, so many collaborations with other companies that are also Im implanted in, on the campus. Uh, and so many students you can also uh, choose from. Uh, so many students, so, many, so much talent uh, that we can benefit from. For us, it's a blessing to be on campus at EPFL. All right, and just to wrap it up, why go with an exoskeleton? What was your, I imagine this kind of thing only comes from some kind of personal motivation. Am I right? So I think exoskeletons have always been uh, kind of a childhood dream for me, you know. A childhood dream? Yeah, exactly. I think uh, as, as a kid you can always dream of uh, new ideas and, and ha having like a suit, a robotic suit around your body that can compensate for disabilities or, or, or help you do more things. Uh, I think it's, it's always stuck in my mind uh, uh, as, as a kid already. But did and you know someone who could have used this or were you close to somebody that... You know, I would always play with Lego and, and, and look around for, for, for uh, inspiration. And it's, it's just something that comes to your mind as, oh, that would be cool to have, to have a suit that could help you do better things or do things better. And but there's a jump from helping you do things better to changing people's lives. Exactly. You know, uh, as a roboticist, being able to use our uh, knowledge, to use uh, our expertise, uh, for the benefit of people. That, that was always uh, a criteria for me uh, coming out of, uh, uh, of EPFL, uh, a criteria for what to do next and, and being able to use this background that I have uh, as a roboticist to help the life of people. Um, that's, that was just uh, the only way possible for, for it. All right, and last question. If we look at the cost of something like this, what are we talking about? Can you put a price tag on it in the moment? And do you see insurances covering something like this moving forward? So there are already devices like, like this one on the market. Um, maybe not as performant, not as fast, not as, a, not as light, lightweight. Uh, and their price tag is in the range between 80 and 150,000 euros. And uh, for us, the value that it's providing with respect to the price tag there is kind of a gap in between these two things, between the values providing and the, and the price tag. And we absolutely need to, to bring the cost down and bring the, the, the price tag down for, for people with disabilities before they can actually afford one. And, and that's something we've, we've been tackling with modularity, uh, being able to address more use cases, address more markets in a kind of horizontal way uh, is a way for us to reduce the cost, to reduce the pressure cost on the individual components. So we can keep the same motors, the same electronics, the same batteries, all these components that can be shared across different markets, so we can actually reduce the price on, on each um, of the devices. All right, well Tristan, thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. And congratulations on the success of Exoskeleton, twice. <laughs>